We've all been confronted with scenes that look like this. And I'm not talking about the landscape part of the scene, I'm talking about the light. This is a high dynamic range, high contrast scene. And the camera's image sensor isn't able to record the light properly. The sky is overexposed and completely white. The shadows are underexposed and completely black. And because I was there when I took this image, I can tell you that this is not what the scene looked like to my eye. Two of the biggest challenges in photography have always been dealing with wide dynamic range light like this and balancing tonal values while still maintaining good image contrast. This is an example of an image with good overall contrast. However, let's say we wanted to work with the tonal balance even further by darkening down the highlights and opening up or lightening the shadows. The result is an overall loss of contrast and this is something that often happens when you try to work with tonal balance in high dynamic range light. It's also a problem that HDR software has. The advanced techniques in these tutorials should help you overcome these challenges and open up new doors to the kinds of images that you can create. But if we're going to work with dynamic range, we have to have a good understanding of what it is. Dynamic range is the range of light values in a scene from the darkest shadow all the way to the brightest highlights. The greater the difference in light intensity between the darkest darks and the lightest lights is, the greater the overall dynamic range. The human eye can perceive a dynamic range of between 15 and 25 stops of light. That means that from the darkest shadow to the brightest highlight, the intensity of light value can double 15 to 25 times, and we can still see good detail in both shadows and highlights. However, cameras can only record somewhere between 5 and maybe at the outside 10 stops of light. That's a much more narrow range of light that the camera can record compared to what we can see. Unfortunately, a lot of the dramatic light that we want to photograph and capture in nature has a dynamic range of 15 to 25 stops. This is a graphic representation of a low dynamic range image, or low contrast. It doesn't have any good or deep black values, and it doesn't have any real bright highlight values. Just kind of mid-tone range in between. This is what a low contrast, low dynamic range scene looks like. No dark shadows, no real bright highlights, and that's what we'd expect from an image in the fog. Foggy images are naturally low contrast. This graphic represents a normal dynamic range scene and the tonal values in that. It has good dark shadow values, bright highlights, tonal values in between, and all of that is able to be contained in a single exposure in the camera. A scene with tonal values like that, a dynamic range like that, might look like this. Good bright highlights, still with detail, good dark shadows, still with detail, and all the tonal values in between. So a normal dynamic range scene like this, the camera captures it, and it looks very similar to the way we saw it. The problem comes when we get into situations where the dynamic range is beyond what the camera can catch in a single exposure. The graphic representation might look something like this. Again, we have good shadow and highlight contrast, tonal values in between, but the difference between the, the intensity of light as it travels from the shadows to the brightest highlights is much wider, much more high dynamic range. This is what the camera can capture. This is what we can see. Now the camera can try to capture this, but it's either going to see the shadows appropriately and overexpose the highlights, or it's going to expose the highlights properly and underexpose the shadows, or both at the same time. And that looks like this. Expose for the shadows, lose the highlights. Expose for the highlights, lose the shadows. Our challenge is to figure out how to work with the camera and with our processing so that we can have a final image that more closely represents what we experienced and the scene that we want to show, something that looks more like this.